Okay, chapter 43, life musculoskeletal chapter, we talk about some metabolic and rheumatic skeletal disorders. <clears throat> A quick review on what we've already talked about with normal bone remodeling. Remember that your osteoblast or your bone building cells, they control bone remodeling by basically uh, laying down new bone. Um, they secrete a compound called an ligand that controls the osteoclasts, which are the bone breaking or the bone chewing cells. And basically they work uh, by causing a synthesis of the proteins and the calcium salts needed to build bone. Bone cells and bone marrow cells produce osteoprotogerin, O-S-T-E-O-P-R-O-T-O-G-E-R-I-N. That's in your book. It basically um, tells the osteoclast not to function anymore. Um, this first line here where it blocks the action of rank ligand, that is not right. Um, you can mark through that sentence there. Uh, with the secretion of OPG, bone breakdown decreases and bones are stimulated to grow. Um, just remember that vitamin C and vitamin D are necessary for formation. Uh, mechanical stress stimulates uh, osteoblast or those, those bone building activity and stimulates the formation of the matrix. And remember with calcitonin, that uh, basically keeps calcium and phosphate in the bone and stimulates bone growth. So since we've reviewed, let's talk a little bit about some disorders. Um, osteopenia is actually not a diagnosis but a condition. It is decreased bone mass, which is a part of osteoporosis. With osteoporosis, you actually have osteopenia or decreased bone mass. You see this obviously more than in women, your older woman who is in menopause. With this, not only do you have a decrease in bone mass, but you have a decrease in the spongy bone or your innermost bone strength. Uh, which leads to an increase in bone fragility and the potential for bone breaks or fractures. With osteoporosis, your bone resorption or break exceeds the rate of bone formation. And there are lots of factors that contribute to osteoporosis, but the main one that we hear about are decreasing estrogen levels. So that is why you see osteoporosis more commonly in your um, postmenopausal woman who has a decrease in her estrogen levels. Remember we said that malacia on the end of the word means softening. So this term is osteomalacia. Basically we have bone softening. The bone is not mineralized the way it's supposed to. It's not rigid enough. It's actually softer. It's caused by insufficient calcium and phosphate absorption and it results in bone pain and tenderness your risk for fracture is up, as well as uh, bone deformities. Rickets um, that you see in children um, is actually a vitamin D deficiency, with, which causes inadequate calcium absorption from the diet. Remember we said um, in order for dietary calcium to be absorbed and useful for the body, it had to combine with vitamin D. So. If you have inadequate vitamin D, you can have all the calcium in the world and it's not going to do anything for your for your bones or your body. Uh, the pathologic processes are the same as osteomalacia in the adult, um, except with these children you may they may actually have stunted growth, uh, stunted growth. Um, their skull may be enlarged but soft. Their fontanelles, the soft spots on their skulls, may be cl uh, slow to close up. Uh, their teeth development may be delayed um, as well. Paget's disease is another um, bone disorder where you have excessive bone turnover. Basically that means 
you have an increase in bone mineral resorption and formation. The only problem with that is that the new bone the new bone that is formed is usually a little bit disorganized, looks a little bit deformed. Fracture is very common. Um, it's also very common for the new bone um, to form more often in the skull. So the patients may have signs and symptoms uh, such as headache, ringing in the ears, uh, dizziness. They may also have new bone formation in the spine and the pelvis, which makes them have a, a wing type gait when walking. Now on your exam, I do definitely want you to know the difference between rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. It's very important. Um, rheumatoid osteo, uh, excuse me, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disorder. Um, your, the body develops antibodies against immunoglobulin G fragments, and that causes macrophages and neutrophils to release enzymes that cause damage to the joint cartilage. It usually affects the small joints first, like the fingers, wrists, knees, and feet. And one differentiating factor is that it will affect the joints symmetrically. It won't just be on, on one hand or one wrist. It's usually both hands, um, both sets of fingers, both feet. Um, it is symmetrical. Another differentiating factor with rheumatoid arthritis patients complain of morning stiffness. Um, their swelling and pain is usually worse in the morning, usually lasting anywhere from an hour to two hours um, in the morning. They also have abnormal healing and they actually build up granulation tissues that you can see, or granulation tissue that you can see here in the, in the picture here of the knee. So let's compare uh, rheumatoid to osteoarthritis, which is a degenerative joint disease. It's the most common arthritis that we see. Um, basically, you have uh, the patient has inflammation of the joints, usually secondary to some type of physical damage or overuse, and the joint cartilage itself is is damaged. You know, it can actually have spur formation. Um, the cartilage becomes weak rough, eroded, and no longer provides the protection that it needs to the bone. Uh, these patients uh, will usually have aching pain that is worse as the day goes on. Where your rheumatoid patient has worse pain and stiffness and swelling in the morning, your osteoarthritis will get worse as they use their joints more. Um, they get more relief with rest. Um, you see this more in the hips, knees, vertebrae. It can be one-sided rather than symmetrical. Very common in athletes, very common in your obese um, uh, patients in their weight joints. We've mentioned lupus several times throughout the semester. We're actually going to learn what it is now. Systemic lupus erythematosus, or SLE, is a chronic inflammatory disease that can affect every organ in the body, including the musculoskeletal system. It's an autoimmune disorder where the body uh, forms antibodies and immune complexes. And I've uh, listed some of the antibodies that can that can develop in the body here on your slide. You see it more common in women. And again, it can damage um, all of the organs or any tissue. Um, the most common early signs and symptoms that you see are arthralgia and arthritis, um, joint tenderness and joint inflammation, followed by a very classic common uh, skin lesion that you see on the face. It goes across the bridge of the nose onto the cheek and it takes on a butterfly wing appearance. So we call it the butterfly rash. There's a good picture in your book if you want to look that up. Um, 
It can lead, again, to other disorders, including glomerulonephritis, arthritis, pericarditis, atherosclerosis, and certain central nervous system inflammations. These people will have flare-ups and remissions. Um, treatment may include non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs as well as steroids um, when they have an exacerbation. a couple of other disorders that I'm putting here just so you'll be familiar with the term. Systemic sclerosis, also known as scleroderma, S-C-L-E-R-O-D-E-R-M-A, is where you have collagen deposits in the skin and the internal organs, which can also obviously lead to some, some problems. Spondyloarthropathies are inflammation at the insertions of tendons and ligaments. Again, I'm not going to go into uh, detail on those. I just wanted you to be familiar with the terminology. Reactive arthropathies here, I think you can read um, on the slide. I probably won't ask you anything about, about those. Again, just for your information. And last is gout, good old gout um, syndrome, uh, is where you have an increased serum uric acid level, um, and those uric acid crystals will actually accumulate in the joint. Uh, uric acid is the end product of purine metabolism that you find lots of different foods, and it causes inflammation of the joints. Um, People who have acute attacks usually, um, it will usually affect one joint and it loves to go to the big toe, loves to be in the big, the great toe. Um, it's usually the number one spot. It can be aggravated by exercise, certain foods, certain medicines, alcohol can bring on an attack. And usually the pain is very sudden, very acute, along with redness and swelling uh, and warmth of the joint. Now, this um, particular picture, you can see that the patient has developed um, TOFI, which are deposits of the urate crystals there in the joint, which is the worst um, case scenario there. Most people will come in, um, have an attack. It's, again, usually on the big toe, and um, you can give them non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and after several days, it, it should... Uh, get better. And that covers musculoskeletal cystin. Um, be studying this. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, and I'll be glad to try to help you um, as much as I can. Archive recording.